this is your boy rude boy again with another version of my pac-man game i did some updates to it some very very significant updates and let me show you what i have if you have seen my other my earlier pac-man videos they were very primitive oh not this one sorry not this yet they're very primitive looking and let me show you this one now this game here does not use the coordinate system to move the ghost around anymore there are just too many gaps that i have to contend with and it would be a nightmare if the game was even bigger it would be an absolute nightmare to get the ghost to move around um, randomly so i had to come up with a way to not use the coordinate system and i'll get to how that was done first let me show you a game that uses the coordinate system to move the ghost around randomly and that's this one it's fairly primitive my interest here was basically getting the ghost to move around when i first developed this software basically getting a ghost to move around it's, it's not done it's not perfect but i the intent it was completed and i was able to do what i wanted to do and here we see the ghost moving around and um, there are only a few grid positions i have to contend with one here one here one here one here one here and one here only six grid position so that doesn't make it too bad to use the grid positioning method to um, get your ghost to move around the grid fairly randomly if you haven't seen my other videos on the grid positioning method um, let me just explain to you very briefly what it what it is when the ghost gets the position in this two-dimensional array because this whole box is in a two-dimensional array is drawn out in a two-dimensional array once the ghost gets to this position or this position here for example it would then decide whether it wants to go down continue left or go back or right as you just saw that go just there. all right the explanation now here is um, an illustration of what happens during the grid the grid positioning method when the ghost is at this position here only at th that position it would decide whether it wants to continue whether it wants to go back up or go back or go right in this case if it's here then it will uh, calculate whether it wants to go up continue going left or right <coughs> as the case may be <clears throat> in the non-grid positioning um, method which I came up with I don't have to worry about grid positioning so even though I have a million gaps the same set of code will always work I don't have to I don't have to code for each individual position in the code this is how this is an example of uh, positioning uh, setting the ghost direction based on its grid position Here it is. <clears throat> so the grid, this this method checks the grid coordinate. If the ghost is at this coordinate, which is row one, column one, then do this bunch of this block of code here. Execute this block of code, and if it's at this column and this row then it can either go down or right those are the only two di directions it can go and we use a random number to choose 
between the two. Random number generator modded by two, and that would choose which one, um, which direction you want to go. In. Same thing here. This is in the middle of the grid. One twenty uh, rows. One column twenty seven. Um, it can go either down, right, or left, and it depended on which where the, the original direction. If it was originally going right, then it can either continue right, go down, or go back left, based on this coordinate. On the non-coordinate system, which is way better because I can have a gigantic maze, a gigantic Pac-Man maze, and the same code would always work. I don't have to worry about um, hard coding grid positions anymore. And how that works is every time the ghosts move, then it will check. It will check whether it can go left, right, up, or down. But as I said, if the original in this, then my new game, I don't want it going down and then having the option just to bounce and go back up. Um, I don't. I don't want it. And that way, it looks better if it just continues in another direction. Uh, uh, opposed to the original direction. To do that, you ha um, if you're familiar with um, a binary table like this I have set up here, since I can go right, left, up or down, I have four options. Each of those options can either be true or false. And out of those four options, I can get a zero or one. Zero means false a one or higher than a one any whole number in C higher than zero is true so <clears throat> down is assigned to the one column the value one column so anything in this column that is true has a value of one two is assigned to up and that is the Anything in this column has a decimal value. Anything in this column that is true has a decimal value of 2. In the third column here, any is assigned to left. Anything that is in this column that is true has a decimal value of 4. And so in the fourth column, has a, which is assigned to right, anything in that column that is true has a decimal value of 8 and of course if it's 0, 0 means nothing or false so if we are here if we are here where you see this ghost the original direction was going down then we get to this position point then up is set to 0 automatically because I don't want it to go back up so it does a check. Since it automatically sets up to zero, it does a check. Can I go left? No, I cannot go left. There's a wall there. So that's zero. Can I go right? Can I go down? Can I continue going down? No, I cannot continue going down. So down is set to zero. Can I go right? Yes, I can go right. So right is set to eight. And if you notice, I can use any of these numbers or a combination of these numbers to get the value of any one of these columns. If this column is 0, as we see here, and this column is 15, I can use any of these numbers or a combination of these numbers to get any one of these values from 1 to 15 as it stands. We don't care about row 0, 
the only time all of these um, values would be set to zero is during the initial state, the, the, the first execution of the program. After that, one of them must be set to true. So this w will only happen in the first and there is a block of code that handles that separately. This will never happen as well. 15 will never get 15 because one is always set to zero. One of them, at least one of the choices is always set to zero. So if we go back to this drawing here, since we can only go right, then right gets the value, the decimal value of eight. Everything else gets the decimal value of zero. Let's go back to the code and see how it was implemented. And that was, it was implemented using a switch case. So there are 14 cases since we're not dealing with rows 0 and rows where all of rows 15 there are 14 cases that we have to worry about case in in the example we only got up to case 8 so case 8 is true and when we get the decimal value of 8 um a switch case then the direction is set to right we just do a simple we just do simple arithmetic here where x equals right left up or down in this in the example i showed you right is eight and everything else is zero so x is eight you switch eight you switch x it goes down to case where it's 8 it sets the direction to right once that sets the direction the case is broken and since there is no default uh, code the function returns to the main function and, uh, and then it goes to the move function move function this function here this is the function that actually erases the ghost from one element or index or grid coordinate and draws it in the in the next grid coordinate depending on the direction of the ghost okay so that's how you get a ghost to move around fairly randomly in a maze without using grid, the grid coordinate method. This is the non-grid coordinate method and why it's so good is because it will work whether the grid is this small or 10 times bigger. It works just the same way. I don't have to worry about hard coding each grid point. And if you didn't see the video of how I got um, this maze to look like a Pac-Man maze, I suggest you go back to that video. I have a video there on that simple Pac-Man game, uh, Pac-Man grid, how to get it to look like Pac-Man uh, maze. And it's simply, I, all these uh, lines are replaced by blocks. Since I don't have access to the block character through my keyboard because it's just dastardly having to do alt uh, do a fu function alt and press the number and, and and draw that out on into a 2d two-dimensional array that's just craziness it's just easy for me to go through to draw this out, these lines, these characters that are available to me and then replace them with block with blocks which is done by this simple function right here this simple function just replaces these the line, I forget what you call it I know it's called pipe in 
in Linux, but um, this vertical line, I, everywhere it sees this line in a grid coordinate, it just replaces it with a block. And this logic here, moving the ghost, <clears throat> you have to take into concern, you don't want the ghost to crash into a block and destroy your wall. So that's where this piece of this argument does that. So this is my this is how the ghost move. The direction is passed to this function. When direction is passed, it chooses if direction is left, that's what LT and at this grid location if at this grid location is not equal to block. So if it's not equal to block and if it's in if it's going left then the left movement um, code this this block of code will be executed. That would keep moving it left, 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 left. I have one for right. This would keep moving it right, 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 right and so on and so forth okay I hope you understood the code here it is again and that's how you get a Pac-Man looking grid and a ghost to move around that maze uh, fairly randomly I love it it's it's like my greatest creation whatsoever it took me a while to figure it out too okay so happy times coding see you guys i'm off to school again i'm not gonna have a lot of time to do this sort of stuff i'll be doing other stuff okay peace y'all